Good. Okay. Hello. So this is my chat with my best friend, uh, ex-teammate Tom Derbyshire. Uh, this is just a video to basically keep the kids engaged all around the country, um, specifically in Peterborough, who aren't necessarily in Nepal at the moment, maybe missing that bit of inspiration and just a bit more insight into uh, an elite swimmer's journey into how they got to the top level. Uh, so, Tom, you okay? Yeah, all good, thank you. Not too bad. Getting used to isolation Excellent. life. Yeah, so what, what have you been doing recently, past, uh, past day or so, past two days? Past couple of days. Uh, just been trying to get myself into a bit of routine, really. Uh, wake up, um, put a little to-do list together. So I've been trying to do some home workouts, some gym routines, trying to keep myself fit whilst I'm not being able to do what I'd normally like to do. Yeah, what's what's normally on your gym routine for each day? What do you normally start off with? Uh, well, since I stopped swimming, it's been quite a lot of running. Um, obviously, I'm allowed to do run, uh, one run a day, um, but I like to tend to go to the gym as well. So because I can't go to the gym and do my weights and things, it's been trying to sort out a body weight program to do last time at home. Uh, so, you know, just the general squats, press ups all that sort of thing trying to make it a bit more cardiovascular as well okay cool um and then what have you been doing say the past past few weeks obviously you, you start swimming in january um how you yeah, been keeping yeah. busy since then yeah so i um i stopped swimming for, for, uh, in january i've been swimming for about 10 years so it's quite a big transition really um, and I'd taken the year out of uni to focus on the Olympics. So without uni, because I'm still studying sports and exercise science, um, I was looking to get a job at Swimpath. So it's like, um, it's a swim shop company, basically, but we're online as well. So they've offered me a place there, which I've taken up. And they've let me work on their TriPath site as well, which is triathlon based. And um, they're helping me get involved in triathlons. So I've been searching for a new challenge since I stopped swimming because I'm quite an active guy and I like competition and I like to do sport um so the opportunity arose to do triathlon so I said I'm going to fully get myself into that which is why I've started to try and do a bit more running I mean I need to get a bike to try and start cycling as well. <laughs> but uh yeah so that's what I'm trying to do now uh it's still very endurance based which is what I am so I think I'll suit it quite nicely yeah, I'm sure when uh, when this lockdown's finished, you can get out. You'll be doing you know your two or three exercises a day, just like you were doing for the past past ten years. Oh, yeah, um, so, which, which bit you are you most looking forward to? Is it the cycling, the running, or are you still lo looking forward to just the swimming? I'm looking forward to all of it, really. I mean, I don't really have much of a background in running or cycling. Like I've done what I used to do what bike sessions whilst I was training, um, but I haven't been out on a road before, really. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, yeah, just pushing myself and seeing how far I can go with it and seeing how good I am, because I really have no idea. Like, I know I've got the good a good engine, but I just need to transition that into the cycling and running. So. Yeah, and a little bit more on uh, swim path. Uh, do you think swimming has helped you not necessarily get that job because of who you know, but um, like your skills as regards to working in a different profession? Oh, without a doubt. Like producing for so long you know you develop so many skills you develop your time commitment uh, your time management sorry your commitment you show dedication um social skills even like i've been club captain at uh, my two previous clubs um so i've kind of been able to like, take well with people i know how to like i've led warm-ups and things and like leadership's always a good trait that employers are looking for but I think really it just shows time management because you manage to do so much training whilst you're at school, whilst you're at university, um, and employers love that. So I think every skill I've developed has come from swimming, really. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, there's a lot of skills you learn which aren't just in the pool. Like you mentioned, time management. I mean, oh, yeah. what, you, you, how, how far away was uh, was your second club from home? It's about, what, half an hour? Yeah, 30, 40 minutes. So... Before I started boarding, yeah, I used to travel 40 minutes to get to school, spend the day there, and then 40 minutes back. So it was early mornings and late nights. So a little bit more on your background of swimming. Um, obviously, we swam the same same place for a good number of years and still stay yeah. good friends. But um, obviously, we've both gone, gone our different ways um, yes, since yeah. the days of Stafford Leisure Centre. Yeah. So um, just give us a bit of a background of where you started, where you started to learn to swim and um, the path you took? 
Yeah, so I initially got into swimming because my parents wanted me to learn to swim, like in swimming lessons, like every parent and child, like every parent wants their child to do. Um, so I progressed through the stages. I think I got to about stage eight or nine, I think, and then Stafford Apex, our local swimming club, um, just asked if I wanted to go train at a se- uh, like try out a session with them. I think they did it for everyone at that level. So that's what I did, and I kind of just really enjoyed it. I went, then they invited me to go back for more sessions, so I did that, and then I just got into competitive swimming from there. Really. How old were you when you started? Uh, I think. I started swimming lessons about four or five, but then I started swimming for Stafford Apex about nine or ten, I think it must have been. Um, yeah, I think it must have been about ten because I was in about year six at primary school. So, so year ten is actually a little bit later than what most people most yeah. people start. I mean, our mini squad starts at seven. I started a week before my ninth birthday, and obviously, you know, you still got to that that elite level even starting at ten. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I was late to get into most of, like, stages, I guess. So I think I made my first regionals at maybe 13 or 14, and then I made my first nationals at 15, I think, or something around there. So I was quite... I I wasn't, like, an early developer. I wasn't at the stage from a young age. I definitely grew into it as I got older. Yeah, that's good. Uh, So you started at Stafford. Um, Obviously, who who was your coach? Who was your favourite? Any highlights of your time there? And when, when did you move on? Um, I have nothing but good mem- uh, good memories from my times at Stafford, to be honest. Um, uh, my coach was Julie Shenton. I still speak to her now. still get on really well with her now. Uh, when I see her, when I come down to the pool, I'm always welcome. Uh, I think my highlights have just got to be, you know, enjoying county competitions, enjoying doing, like, the little Staffs League and the Diddy League and just having fun with my friends, really. At- when I was at Stafford, I didn't take it too seriously. Um like I, tra- I trained hard. I've always trained hard, and but I never really had too much ambition. I guess it was just enjoying it, having fun with my friends. Uh, and then I, it got to a point where I think I just made my regional times, and I, things started looking up for me a bit. And I started trying to aim for nationals and things. I was about 13, 14, and I had a, a sit down chat with my coach Julie, and she said, you know, I think the time's right for me to look for a, like a new stage because uh, Stafford had kind of offered me all they had. Like, I couldn't get any more pool time. Um, they were, as much as I got on with my friends, it was a limited training. Like, the standard of training wasn't quite what I needed. I needed to be pushed a little bit more. I think you'd be fair in saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's a, it's a good club, uh, amazing training hours, but there wasn't quite the space there which, uh, which you needed. Yeah, exactly, and I just needed a bit more just needed to be taken to that next level, which is why um, I looked at the Royal Wolverhampton School. So as I was studying my GCSEs at the time and my and the Royal School was about 40 minutes away from the school I was currently at, um, I decided to go part-time there to, so I could finish my GCSEs off in Stafford. So for a year or two, I was part-time. I think I used to do four sessions at Royal maybe and six sessions at Stafford, something like that, which was quite hard because it meant... And my two coaches didn't really communicate. So I was with Nathan Hilton at that point at Royal. And, um, yeah, I remember doing like 3100s on a Monday morning at Royal, going to school, then coming back in the evening at Stafford and then being told I had to do 3100s again in the evening at Stafford. So <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a tough time, but it definitely definitely made me the athlete that I am. Uh, I, think I got used to not moaning. I got used to working hard, which is always a good trait to have, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Um, so obviously you did your GCSEs uh, yeah. at Stafford, and, and then you know you went to Royal. And then how old were you when you went full time to Royal? Uh, I went to Royal full time when I was uh, 16, 17. So I started lower sixth at the Royal Wolverhampton School. So that's when I moved to Royal full uh, moved to Royal full time. Uh, and then that's when Mark Spatman joined as head coach there. So as as he joined head coach, I joined full time. So it worked out quite nicely. Yeah, and uh, so obviously you're 16 when you started your A levels. I mean, yeah, uh, I think 16 was a pretty significant year for you. If oh, you want to just expand yeah. that a bit, I mean, you're at the uh, the two clubs when you achieved what, uh, if it's possibly up there, one of your greatest achievements. Yeah, well, I I think actually it was my, it was my first year at Royal because it was just before I turned 17 that I managed to. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So in my first year with Mark, I actually managed to break the British age group record on 1500 
at the Olympic trials in 2016. Uh, it, it was not expected to be expected at all. I actually, um, I'd been really struggling before, like a couple of months before I'd been, I'd about two weeks out of the water. So I wasn't, I didn't even think I was in that good a shape, but uh, yeah, it just all clicked. And um, I managed to go, I think it's 15, 22 long course at 16. So it was, it was a big drop, a big PB for me. And uh, yeah, I managed to make my first British junior team from that, which was, which was great, which was something what? I'd always wanted to achieve. Yeah. What were you feeling, uh, obviously, when you were there at trials ready to go? And obviously, you know, you knew that in 15 minutes later, you were going to be breaking the British record. Uh, yeah. Do you remember Do you remember anything uh, uh, before? Not really. Like, well, the night before, I was obviously just so nervous. Um, I remember I wasn't quite in the final heat, so I wasn't in the evening. But So I was like the last heat of the morning session, I think I must have been. Um, I remember just watching the times of all the heats before me because at that point I was only really bothered about the people who were in my like age band to qualify for juniors so I was kind of just looking at what sort of times they were going and I kind of I knew what time I'd have to go to qualify for I think it was Baku at the European Games at, that year so I knew what time I had to go I was just watching what other people were doing my age really something that I probably shouldn't have been doing should be focusing on myself but I didn't have too much pressure on myself because I knew I hadn't had the greatest of build-ups to it then I remember just, you know, diving in, doing what I, doing how I race, just trying to be repetitive as possible, hitting the splits that I've been working on for so long. And I remember looking up at the board and just thinking, like having to look at it twice because I wasn't really expecting to see that. <laughs> see that yeah. Time. I think I must have dropped about 20 seconds from my PB. So it was a big, it was a big drop. And um, yeah, I think I owe Mark a lot for that because the taper, like I've always been nervous with taper. Uh, I've, I've, I've hated tapers I've, I hate them I like to work hard I don't like going easy I think I'm losing fitness all that irrational stuff and um, he just I remember sit, him sitting me down at the start of taper and being like this is what we're going to do he drew a water bucket and was like we've got everything in this bucket now it's not going to come out and it was just yeah it just worked perfectly and the rest is history really you mentioned uh, water bucket and uh, repetition yeah um, I remember uh... Is this right that like you only missed one session, uh, obviously, in the years before, and that was for your prom? Obviously, you're uh, pretty yeah, committed yeah. to uh, yeah. the cause. Uh, yeah, I hardly ever miss sessions. I think, I think you might be right. So, yeah, that would have been the year before. So, when my last year at, as a, like a, at Stafford and training part-time at Royal, yeah. I never miss sessions, really. Um, I was always one of – I like to think I was one of the hardest workers anyway. That's, like, the thing that I held most – about myself it's always something I'm happy to say like I'm a, I'm a hard worker and I, I don't take like any shine away from the fact that I'm not probably the most talented athlete that doesn't bother me like when I was training at Bath National Centre my coach Dave said you know your talent pool is probably only really this but you know you make up for it in hard work and you know, I might not have had the best technique and I might not have had you know the best underwater kick or the best anything like that but I worked hard and I think that's where what got that's what got me to where I got to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, you were full time Royal for two years under Mark, and then that obviously put you at the end of end of Royal. What was probably what your greatest achievement? Do you think? Um, I think winning European Juniors was my greatest achievement, to be honest. Yeah. That was um, like I'd say ever since I kind of started learning about swimming and. Like, you know, when you first start, you kind of only just learn about counties and then that's your aim. And then you start learn, hearing about that as a regionals and then that becomes your aim. And um, for me, I'd, when I joined Royal, they had a quite a prestigious history of like always a swimmer making a European junior team. Because um, obviously that's really the limit that the school has, because when everyone gets to 18, they all move on. So like junior level swimming is the the, the, the main thing there, I guess. Um so yeah, it was always my aim just to make a European junior team. And we had like the records of what times had won juniors and stuff on pool side. And I was just laughing and joking with uh, Tom Elgar, our assistant coach at Royal going, oh, I think I could go that. I think I could win. Seeing that like the European junior record was 1506, I think it was at the time. And I remember seeing Dan Jervis win it a couple of years before I went. And I was like, oh, I really want to do well at like juniors. That's my thing. Um, so I qualified for my first juniors in 2015 
And um, I was actually the only guy on the team not to win a medal. Everyone else either got a relay medal or an individual medal. And I remember in the team meeting afterwards, it was like, oh, well done, guys. Literally nearly everyone in the room here got a medal. And it was I was the only one who didn't. Um, I didn't swim well. I went like PB plus 15, I think. But I struggled with illness just before. I got put in isolation whilst out in the meet because I was struggling with illness. So it wasn't really a great experience. Um, and it, it took a lot out of me, really. I was really disappointed with it, especially with it being my first time representing Great Britain. So the year after when I qualified, I really wanted to make a statement and show that, you know, I am good enough to be at this stage and things. So um, when I went in, I think I was ranked sixth in the 1500. I'd had an awful 400 free the first day. I remember being in the call room thinking, you know, this is my last opportunity. This is the last time I might ever represent my country. And I, I, I can honestly say I've never been in the mindset like it. it was, I, I was just so ready and so ready to go. I wasn't focused on anything else. And uh, yeah, I, just, I dived in. My, my race plan was to actually, um, to like, I think Amanda, my coach at the meet, said, be the rabbit, not the, no, be the fox, not the rabbit. So she wanted me to go out, not first, just, you know, hold back and then build into it. So I went in there thinking, oh, I'm going slow, I'm going to build into this race. And then I turned at 100 and I looked around and I was a body length in front of everyone. And I was like, oh, I feel good. And then I just, yeah, I just repped it out and, I've never been so emotional after a race. I think there's quite a few pictures of me, like with tears in my eyes, smack in the water. Yeah, that was by far the, my highlight of Royal and probably the highlight of my career, really. You mentioned your mindset. Uh, have you been someone who's always had a, uh, a what's the word, um, routine before your race? Uh, always things you think of before before you go in. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can't. I, I've worked with numerous sports psychologists, you know, with trying to sort out like the, the best mindset for me before I race. I think when I was younger, it was just, I was so competitive. I didn't really think about anything. It was just, you know, getting to the wall first. But then as you get older and, you know, things become a bit more different and it, it started, become, started to become a bit less like basic, really. I tried numerous things. And I think towards the end, I just tried to be as relaxed as possible. I used to build myself up and get so tense that when I hit the water, it, it just wasn't work right. So I practiced a lot of being just staying calm, staying relaxed, just thinking, going over what my race plan is and just focusing on myself because that's all you can do at the end of the day. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, you say you work hard and you focus on yourself. That's literally you knew you did the work, that uh, water yeah, bucket exactly. is full, um, everything you've done to get there. And then, so you uh, won European Juniors. Was that the year you moved on to uni? Yeah. So, after winning juniors, I was lucky enough to be offered a space at the National Centre based in Bath. So I'd always been planning on going to university at Bath and thought I'd be joining the uni group like to swim with the uni. But after my performances, I got offered the chance to train with the National Centre there. So it was a dream for me, really, to be able to train with the likes of Jazz Carlin, Andrew Willis. Like I'd always seen them about, always seen them. On, I'd had posters of them on my wall. So when that opportunity got offered to me, I had to take it straight away. And then, yeah so yeah, uh how many times were you training a, a week there at your peak um i did 10 two and a half hour sessions in the pool uh three one and a half hour gym sessions a week and then i did a couple of hour half hour long pilates sessions as well so it was pretty full on that's when it started getting proper serious <laughs> <laughs> yeah so how much that uh how was that different to your time at stafford and royal uh was the progression always constant with the increase of hours and intensity? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, progression wise, in terms of like the training environment, it definitely increased like per stage as you would expect it to. Like when I got to Bath, there were professional, I was training with professional athletes. And although it, I was a bit daunted, like it was a bit daunting for me that it was going to be such a professional environment. And I, it really is a professional environment, but there still is that little bit of fun and there still is that little bit of like banter flowing about, which makes it like really enjoyable still. Although there is the obvious undercurrent of this we're here to perform type of um, environment, which is what I love really. Um, but with my training, I've always been battered with meters. I've always been um, probably too much to be honest in the past I've been battered with meters but I've always been used to a heavy training load so I didn't actually feel the difference in training too much 
but that's probably because I've been lucky with like every program I've been at. We've had great pool time, great availability. Um, so, but I definitely did ramp up my meters as I got older. Like in Bath, I was doing 70, 80 K weeks, which I never did before. Yeah. So out of that 70, 80 K a week, how much would you say was just uh, like a one skill focus with regards to, um, uh, Probably a large portion of it was aerobic in A1. Um, I did a lot of 40 to 50 beats below work, but obviously with my event being 1500, that's kind of essential. It obviously differs from what people are focusing on because at the age we are now at 18, 19, 20, you are more specialized. So the, me as a distance swimmer did a lot more meters and a lot more A1 and A2 as the sprinter, sprint guys did. Um, I did a lot of threshold as well. Uh, I think I did two big threshold sessions a week, uh, w one or two kick sessions. I did a lot of pull. Um, but skills are obviously always a big important thing, and we don't miss them out at the top level either. Like every recovery session is with the time where we take our opportunity to really nail down on our skills. Did a lot of filming on those sessions as well. Like Dave, my coach, was a big believer in like you work hard when you have to, but then when you relax, that's the time when you can really focus on the little things obviously we need to you need to be able to maintain that technique when you're going hard but you can't maintain a technique that you don't have when you're going slow so yeah so your events what 1500 freestyle but yeah. you weren't necessarily always a freestyle were you no no i did a bit of everything really so when i was younger i did 400 medley 200 fly uh i think my first national semi-final was a 200 breaststroke so i always did a bit i think my re first regional gold was in 200 breaststroke actually so I thought I was going to be a breaststroker, but that uh, sadly changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, has freestyle always been your favourite, or? Uh... Um, I don't actually know. Like, I always wanted to be a freestyler because I always thought that that's what the people most cared about. As bad as it sounds, uh, it's like the most popular stroke, isn't it? It's what everyone does. Uh, but no, I really, I really enjoyed doing medley when I was younger. Um, like 13, 14, I really, I think I came fourth at nationals in 400 medley. I really enjoyed it. I think it's just, I didn't have the, my backstroke was nowhere near good enough to be able to get any further. And I developed such an engine for this 1500 that that was just the path that I had to choose really. It was, it's what I was best at, so. And did, uh, did Mark and Julie really let that, uh, make, like make that known that you have to work all four strokes? Or were they very oh, much yeah, focusing on just the 15? Yeah, even when I was training for European juniors, I still did like 20, 200 medleys. So I always mix up the strokes. I think medley is the best way to get fit, to be honest. Um, so I always asked to do a bit of medley. When I was in Bath, I always did fly sets, did some medley sets. I've never just done freestyle sets. Yeah, excellent. Um, so highlights. I'd like you to give three highlights, one from each of your clubs at Apex Royal and Bath. Uh, not necessarily performance related, but any any distinct memories you have. Okay, so could that be? So it's not performance related. Yeah, so let's go. Not related. performance related, just fun or. Performance related. Um, oh, here we go. I think St uh, my highlights at Stafford. I don't really have that many like precise memories. Really, I just remember having so much fun. Like you know, I even when I was at Bath, I still came back to Stafford. I, I just love. I just love going home to train with you guys it was so much fun uh i think like diddy league diddy league final that was a good time uh, 2010 yeah yeah god that is a throwback yeah that was <laughs> that was really fun i've still got the shorts still wear the shorts still got still wear the shorts <laughs> no it's just i just i just have happy memories from stafford of just really like enjoying it and having fun with you like my 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 core friendship group is still you guys from stafford so i think it just shows how close we were and how much fun we had really like the trips like going on the bus to diddy league competitions on a saturday afternoon were always a barrel of laughs <laughs>, laughs yeah um i think my highlight from royal would have to be my cyprus training camp i got absolutely battered but i can't, i felt i feel like i came out of it a, a new man <laughs> i had so much fun and um i think i really like I'm really fond of the relationship I got with Mark. Like he was such a inspiring guy to me and helped me so much that like I'll always be grateful for that. And I'm really like glad I got the opportunity to work with him. 
Excellent. And yeah, your highlight for, for Bath. Highlight from Bath. Oh, not performance based. But, oh, I think just being able to train with the guys I trained with, um, like to be able to train with Jazz Carlin, Andrew Willis, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, Jimmy Guy joined my group at the start of this season. It's just been an absolute pleasure to train with them, really, and to be able to train alongside them, even beat them in a few sets if I, uh, you know, drop that in there. <laughs> no, uh, it's been great. And um, I'm just glad that I got to experience the a professional sporting environment because I've always, like, I always wanted to be a footballer and always wanted to be in that environment of being a professional athlete. And I got to live that life for the past two or three years in Bath. So, that's always been a great highlight. And then being able to race Pouchinari out in Rome also was quite a nice thing to do as a 1500 swimmer. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, you moved to Bath in 2016 yeah. um, and then you, you start swimming at the start of this year. Um, so is there any, any negative, not negatives, but... Um, struggles you've had along along the way would you say uni was the biggest or was there any struggles at uh at the, yeah. your earlier age which which you remember obviously like studying has always been a challenge challenge for every swimmer out there because everyone has to go to school everyone has to do exams you know i don't really think i missed many sessions to be honest when i was doing my a levels and gcses um i'm being completely honest it didn't really stress me out I've always been okay academically and swimming was always my priority. So, and that's the, that's where most of my worry and most of my stress went. So I kind of just got on with my A-levels and GCSEs. Um, when I got to uni, it was a bit more difficult balancing going to lectures and things because at the center, our sessions are a bit less typical swimming hours. They're more in the middle of the day. So I had to miss quite a lot of uni. So it was a bit more difficult balancing it out, but I don't really think it stressed me too much. I think my biggest struggle has just always been myself. Um, I put a lot of, especially towards the end of my career, I put a lot of pressure on myself. Uh, I started worrying a lot about my swimming and it just kind of, I think that's what affected me most and I stopped enjoying it. Um, I wish I, not had taken it less seriously, but just kind of realised that it was only swimming. And as easy as that sounds, as easy as that is to say now I'm not in the bubble, I just, I just wish I'd realised that it is only swimming. And at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And um, I just wish I hadn't put too much pressure on myself and worried about it so much because it, it took me to some places that I didn't want to go to. And that's, that's been the biggest struggle that I ever had. But um, I've had, luckily enough, I've had the best friends and teams around me to get me through it. So Yeah, no, that's good. You've always had that strong team there. I'm sure you get access yeah. to a lot, uh, a lot more uh, bath than you did at Stafford. But um you know, you've yeah. always had your friends there, which has been a constant. Um, not necessarily sports psychologists or S and C coaches, but um, you know, you've you've had a lot of challenges. Um, and could you? What's your biggest challenge? Would you say along your swimming career? Um, I think it was after that juniors in 2015, where I was the only one and not the only one in not in the team not to medal, and I went going PB plus 20 at a major meet. I think it was the first time that I'd ever really not PB'd at a major meet because I was still quite young and I was still quite good at PBing when it came to taper and I found that transition of not PBing all the time quite difficult and then losing all that confidence I guess like I kind of just stopped believing in myself and I don't really ever think I got that belief back in my like it was always quite difficult but um with any sport, I guess you learn that there's always going to be down times. Um, you're not going to PB every time you swim. Uh, you have to learn that the hard way, unfortunately. But you just have to keep getting, keep getting back into training, believe in what you do, trust the process. As uh, cringy as that may sound, but it's it's true. You do have to trust the process and believe in the work that you're doing, and it'll pay off eventually. Yes. Yeah, so how did you cope with that? Uh, you know, confidence low. Um, uh, confidence low result, maybe experience, and then who was there to assist you and get you back on track? Yeah, so obviously, as I've said many times now, Mark, my coach at the time, was there to get me back on track. He was great. He, um, he did a lot to keep me like grounded and he did a lot to build me back up because um, it did take a lot of time. I was so disappointed in myself and I started questioning everything I was doing. I'm um, like, what? are these times good enough in training or 
am I doing the right things out of the pool to recover? And, you know, he just, he just sat me down. And the year after I had meetings with him every week and we just went through what I was doing, discussed how, like, how on track I was to where he wanted to be, how I was feeling about what training was going like. And, um, yeah, I, I guess I just built such a good relationship with him that the confidence he had in me kind of built me up as well. And although confidence needs to come within, it, having Mark there for me was such a big help. Um, obviously, I had my friends as well who always believed in me, uh, probably more than I ever did, to be fair. Um, but yeah, and you have experiences as well. As you get older, you know, you have to go through something to learn about it, I guess. You can't just be ready for it. Um, so the, the experience I built going to so many meets and not having competitions not go my way and being able to deal with that and then learning, you know, that's okay. I mean, when I went to Bath, I learned a lot because um, Andrew Willis used to go about 223 in season for 200 brass. And then he'd go 207 when he was tapered. So, like, I learned from that. And he never used to panic in season. Um, so you just kind of, yeah, it's just experience, having conversations with my coach, saying that he believes in what I'm doing, asking questions, you know, what can I do better? Am I doing the right things? And then you just fill that bucket up with all the positives. And then when it comes to the meet, you know, you're ready. Yeah, I mean, I know as, um, as one of your closest friends and um, that, you know, your coach is always there. We always support you. But what about your parents as well? Obviously, oh, yeah, they were waking up at half past three as well on a Saturday morning and taking you there. Did they, they get involved much in your swimming or did they just literally be the taxi? Um, I don't want to say they were literally the taxi, but they definitely weren't. They weren't pushy parents. They didn't. I everything I did was because what I wanted to do, and they've just always supported me in everything I've done. Um, like my dad's rule was he wouldn't wake me up for morning training. I had to go and wake him up, which I think is a fair rule. Like they wouldn't drag me out of bed. I was the one who was dragging them out of bed. Um, they've never made me do a competition. They've never made me go to training. They've always just been there supporting me. My dad's always been paid a, like learn the swimming code, like code of communication, I guess. Like neither of my parents swam when they were younger. So we all learned how swimming worked together, I guess. So, but yeah, they've just, just always supported me, never pushed me into anything. They've been great. And like, even when it came to the me quitting the, I was disappointed, like I was worried that I was going to disappoint them by stopping, especially on Olympic year. But all they've ever said is that they want me to be like happy. They want me to do what they think is best for me. They just didn't want me to regret my decision. So I honestly, I could never have asked more of my parents. They were great. Um, so there, there is no regrets. And, you know, I achieved more, way, way more than I ever thought I would. Um, and I put everything into the pool. I couldn't have done anything more. I couldn't have trained any harder. I think sometimes you have to go, you know, that was my level and I, I reached the peak that I think I could have reached and I'm, I'm happy with that and I'm looking forward to moving on to new and different things and hopefully helping other swimmers, you know, on their journeys as well because I do like, um, I still talk to a lot of people who still swim, a lot of kids I trained with at Stafford and Royal and I'm always there to offer advice to them and help them along because it is tough. There's no, it's probably one of the toughest sports out there. So, you know, any help I can offer, I'm more than welcome to do that. Yeah, you mentioned uh, how hard you worked in that uh, environment. And obviously when you quit, um, there's a lot of people there who obviously, you know, were saying, you know, you're going to be missed. And then James Guy, the hardest worker or most committed athlete he's ever seen. Uh, James will be as a work beast and unbelievable work ethic. Um, just shows that, you know, you may not be the most talented kid in the pool, but as long as you give a hundred percent, anything's possible, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Like, I think it's fair to say when I started swimming, no one ever thought, ever thought I'd probably even get like a regional time. Like, I remember being at school and people taking the mick out of me for my swimming. Um, and, you know, people would joke going, oh, we'll see you on the Olympics one day, will we? You know, joking about, bantering me or whatever but yeah like you should never put a lit like you should never really put a limit on what you can achieve because work working hard gets you gets you places uh it can get you further than you ever believe if you put the effort in and uh, you should never be ashamed to be i was always known as the keen guy or the uh you know the one who stays extra and does more but looking back i'd never have changed 
reading out those comments gets me a bit upset because it it means uh, <laughs> means a lot when people say sort of that sort of stuff about yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was great. And when I did stop, the messages that I got was like it was overwhelming. To be fair, I wasn't I wasn't expecting it at all. So that was always nice. It made the decision a bit better for me, really. Yeah. So it's been well about twelve years um, swimming up and down. You've been through a lot. You met a lot of people. A lot of experiences. Is there something today um, which you know now, which you didn't know when you were younger, which you'd tell uh, the younger swimmers Ooh. right now? Ooh, tough one, tough one. I feel like I've got too many things. To say. Nah, um, I think when I was younger, I was lucky enough to sit down with Dan Dan Fogg, who was a British 1500 swimmer, and he um, he mentioned to me, you know, don't beat yourself up when things don't go don't quite go your way. That sport. And, you know, I think that is a big thing for, I, I learned a lot from that because I did beat myself up if I didn't PB or I didn't have a session where I trained better than I did the day before. And you just got to, you just got to accept that there's going to be ups and downs of swimming. It's like any sport and you've got to take the lows as well as you take the highs. Uh, but from a non-performance based view, I guess, I think the most important thing you can do is enjoy it. You know, it doesn't last forever. Uh enjoy being able to swim enjoy being with your friends enjoy competing because at the end of the day it is only swimming and there's other things in life that you'll realize when you come out of that little bubble but when, whilst you're in it make the most of it excellent so uh thank you for our chat and i hope in this very uh controversial time right now where no one's in a swimming pool everyone's doing home yeah. workouts at home and uh, that's a bit of inspiration to think that in a few months when right now it isn't going anybody's way um, things are going to get better. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I dread to think how I'd be coping at the moment if I was still swimming. It must be. It, I was um, speaking to Tom Dean earlier, and the Olympics being postponed has thrown him off massively. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he'd be okay with me saying like it's really hurt him that happening because he was in such good shape. So everyone's in the same boat. You just got to take each day as it comes, do what you can, and when we're back to normality, you'll be in the best place that you possibly could be. Okay, so that's great. I think uh, we've wrapped up there. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tom, for a good no, talk. And then. Uh...